Thank you so much for joining us for our year five finals event, celebrating our newest change makers and their positive impact in our community. First and foremost, our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone who's been impacted by the COVID-19 virus. Now we'd love to be celebrating with you live with our change makers as we always do, but we've adjusted our plans just like everyone else. With the help of our incredibly talented team, we'll follow a similar format as we've done in the past. We will be highlighting some of our winners from the past years to see their continued amazing impact in our community. Each of them will introduce one of our eight finalists from year five. But our change makers will be presenting from their homes with live Q&A with our philanthropist investors also in our homes. The event is similar as previous years and the deliberations were offline among the philanthropist investors in real time as always. And then we'll all come back for the exciting final grant awards at the end. A huge thank you to everyone who helped pull this together. Enjoy the presentation. Celebrate the change makers. Thank you again for joining us. And now let's all jump into the tank. Hi, this is Amy Brand, Philanthropy Tanks Executive Director. Welcome to the fifth annual Recorded Finals live event celebrating our youth change makers. You're going to hear from this year's new class of student finalists. It's been a pleasure getting to know all of our students. And just like the programs they're pitching, these students are extremely impressive, diverse, creative, and ambitious. We know that they'll be successful in their future endeavors. During the show, you'll find out what some of our alumni have been up to since pitching their programs. Many of their ideas continue to make positive impacts throughout Palm Beach County. A total of 33 programs have been launched since our inception. Over 65% of them are operating today. 12 of our student programs have become their own 501c3 nonprofit organizations. The leadership, mentorship, and business training our teen change makers receive. These skills will help them for the rest of their lives. All the success happens because of our generous annual partners, event sponsors, and community partners who will be listed throughout our program. We are proud to announce that Philanthropy Tank has expanded to Baltimore. Applications are now open and the Baltimore Live Finals event will take place November 2020. Thank you to our founding partners for their support in making this possible. Thank you to our incredible philanthropist investors for giving your time, expertise, and support to ensure our students are empowered to succeed. Julie Fisher Cummings is the co-founder and chair of Love Light Foundation, which focuses on setting policy with regards to domestic child sex trafficking, underserved women and girls. This is Julie's third time serving as a philanthropist investor. Evan Duell is the Senior Managing Director at Bernstein's private client practice in West Palm Beach. He is a co-founder and the board president of Philanthropy Tank. Evan also serves on committees for the Kravis Center and the Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County. Michael Koner is West Palm Beach's principal in charge at HPK CPAs and consultants. Michael serves locally on several boards, including the Economic Council of Palm Beach County and Florida Tax Watch. He is the co-founder of Philanthropy Tank. Longtime civic leader, investor, and entrepreneur, Abby Stein is Crescent's co-founder and co-chairman. Abby has been involved with starting, investing, and growing over 150 businesses. This is his second time serving as a philanthropist investor. Evan, Michael, Julie, and Abby, we can't thank you enough. A special thanks goes to the many individuals who assisted behind the scenes to prepare our students for this program. Julie Rowe, who rehearsed with the students, the coaches, and our student grant review committee. On a personal note, I'd like to thank our Philanthropy Tank team, Matthew, Corey, Joanne, and Sarah. Thank you for your dedication and passion to our vision and mission. After watching our program, we hope you too will be inspired by our students and motivated to make a change in your community. Our alumni will be introducing our year five finalists who will be entering the tank. We're ready for our first group, so away we go. My name is Adriana Flores, founder of Little Angels Tutoring. My tutoring homework help program has reached over 40 children at El Sol Jupiter Neighborhood Resource Center, and they are dedicated to helping families that are underprivileged. We are planning more clubs and sessions to work with the children one-on-one. -on -one. 
Now please welcome Girls Help Girls. Hi everyone, my name is Ritka Katchum and today I will be pitching Girls Help Girls. Today I'm going to be talking about something that may make some people uncomfortable, but in reality it shouldn't. I'm going to be talking about periods. Hello, my name is Ritka Katchum and my project is Girls Help Girls. Girls Help Girls aims to provide girls and women a network of support and distribute feminine hygiene products. Many women have to make the tough choice between buying food or period-related products because of the expenses, but adequate menstrual hygiene management is not a luxury, but it is a basic need for all people who have periods and should be regarded as a basic human right. To take a look at some key facts, we can see that one in four teens have missed class due to the lack of access to menstrual hygiene products. Then 70% of states in the US still tax feminine hygiene products. To take it back home, the largest demographic of people in poverty in Palm Beach County are females from 25 to 34. While I was growing up, I spent many summers in India. There, I firsthand saw the struggles that many women face with simple things that I take for granted. I took note of all the creative solutions they came up with to replace everyday things like access to clean water or pads. This got me thinking, why should they even have to make these workarounds in the first place? When I came back home, I noticed the lack of free products and wondered how women in my community deal with this problem. Through Girls Help Girls, Period product dispensers will be placed in local schools and public restrooms. Period parties and drives will be held across Palm Beach County and period safety workshops will be held too. Ultimately, Girls Help Girls will create a support network of young girls and women that will foster long lasting relationships. In order to sustain Girls Help Girls, we will work towards maintaining current partnerships with the Women's Foundation, Junior League, and Period the Menstrual Movement, and establishing new ones. Then, Girls Help Girls will be an initiative at Suncoast High School through a club. In the long term, I hope to expand Girls Help Girls to numerous other schools around Palm Beach County. The Girls Help Girls budget will be focused on providing menstrual products and installing pad dispensers all throughout Palm Beach County. I'll be asking for the full $15,000 because now is the time to act during this time of crisis. In conclusion, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to present Girls Help Girls. Please invest and help expand access. Rithika, thank you for an outstanding presentation. I, it was really remarkable. And I think some of us don't even realize that this is a problem. It's, it's below the what other people might even have to deal with. I think when I think about your project, and I think it's wonderful, I wonder how are you going to be able to make this sustainable? So first we would uh, start a club. It's our, I already have a club at Suncoast called Little Smiles and through it, we have a lot of girls who are really eager to participate in the project, Girl Club Girls. And ultimately I'm looking to expand to other high schools and grow an online media presence through a website. That's great. But you know, given the present situation with COVID, how's this going to impact your timeline and how you're going to accomplish your goals? So because of COVID-19, I really want to speed up this process and get these menstrual products out as soon as possible because a lot of families are struggling with it. And, you know, when you go to the store, the shelves are just empty. So a lot of people really need it. And I'd really like to get the products out as soon as possible. So we partnered with Junior League and we are currently, we're currently needing funding to buy the products because we already have distribution routes through them. That's fantastic. Rithika, awesome job. Wonderful that you're taking this on. And, and, and great that you're thinking about how to get jump-started uh, given the, the current environment. So when you think about this and you look back a year from now, what will have been success for you? How, how would you measure that? We would measure success by the number of people we have reached and the number of pads we've distributed and the number of schools that we have collaborated with. So the more pads we get out and the more dispensers we hopefully get out in schools, the greater our impact will be. It's a very educational, good use of facts. Um, that's very important to help sell your idea. Um, you know, in terms of the distribution of the products that you mentioned, it's so important. How do you plan on actually making the distribution out to the, the women and young girls that need the products? So currently through our partnership with Junior League, 
Um, they are distributing diapers through Hospitality for Helping Hands through a car pickup with 800 to 1,000 cars every Friday from 3 to 7. So we've already made that partnership with them, and they're looking for us to distribute pads through that car line. Thanks, Thank oh, you so job. much. Thanks, Rithika. Our project is about translating important information into a Maya language. Languages right now we have Canjobal, Mam, Aguacateco, and Quiche speakers. Palm Beach County is the fourth largest population of Guatemalan Mayans. Many people have been surprised because they feel welcome that we speak their language. We're going to broadcast videos on social media so we can get information out there to our people. We bought laptops and green screen. It makes me feel proud that I can give back to my community. Hi, my name is Lorena Felipe Sebastian, founder of the Mayan Girls. Up next, we have eighth graders from San Vincent Ferrer from Delray Beach. They are called Idea Lab. My name is Angel Rojas. I go to St. Vincent Ferrer and we're Idea Lab. My name is Oliver Charles Pierre, grade at SVF. My name is Pierre Stono, an eighth grade at SVF as well. And our project is Idea Lab. It will be a place where students can design and create to gain skills that will enable them to grow up to be leaders and problem solvers in their community. The Hope Rural School was started to help children of immigrant migrant workers who didn't speak or write English. The students are now blessed to be at the school where everyone wants to give them a chance to succeed. We want to help too by supplying them with the tools to become innovators and problem solvers. As Moses moved from kinder to grades, they are learning to shift from creativity and play to facts and specifics. According to the partnership for 21st skills, a focus on innovation, problem solving, creativity, and critical thinking is needed to prepare these students for the future. We would like to prepare the students at Hope Road School for the future. Do you remember creating things when you were young? Things like this? What did you make? Do you still create? Invention is fun. With a partnership with pre-service teachers and the professors at FAU, St. Vincent Square School, and the Hope Road School, Teachers will create an idea lab where students will learn design thinking. We and all the philanthropy tank finalists here came at our projects using this method, which involves defining a problem and finding a solution for change. FAU students will write the curriculum. We, along with students at St. Vincent Ferrer, will demonstrate the implementation through videos and we will bring guest speakers for students such as engineers, city planners, and entrepreneurs in order to inspire them to invent and create. We are asking for $15,000 for supplies such as robots, laptops, and software, and simple building materials so we can create lessons and videos for the children. The program will keep running smoothly with a continual supply of volunteers and fundraisers to replenish supplies. Thank you for considering supporting this very important project that will impact not only the children, but their families and their community. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I do. Congratulations. So Pierce, Angel, Oliver, really love what you're doing. I love the partnering. I love the mentoring. How has um, sort of the current new normal impacted the program for the next 90, 120 days? Well, obviously their schools will be probably be shut down for a while. So over the summer, what we'll be doing with funding, we'll be creating videos and things for them for when the school year starts up, like to help teach them the design thinking program and how to use all this stuff. That's what we'll be doing over the summer to help them for, get ready for next year. Okay, can you tell us a little bit more about sort of the the, um, the robots and the modeling that you're doing? That would be helpful. Well, we have a um, retired software engineer, Mr. York, that's working there with the media specialist, and them uh, them two will be hosting a hour class every Friday uh, for the students that are there to learn. And how will you guys participate in that? We'll participate by like and making some of the lessons, and we'll also have some of the FAA, FAU participate participants making lessons. And sometimes we might go down there to just act as assistant teachers and help with, help in whatever is needed. And also, our teacher Ms. Paljenko this year started teaching um the sixth and seventh graders the design thinking program and how they will also be helping like next year with this program, and they're all excited about it to also help next year. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations. I love what you're doing, and I think you guys have a great plan and a great team in place. Uh, Michael, do you have any questions? Very impressive, very ambitious. I mean, with the fact that you'd be taping things, could you see this be scaled in any way to include potentially more students than just that one school? If our like, program goes really successful at the local school, we'll try and branch it out to more schools and help more, like, you know, schools that are in need of like technology. And how would you plan on doing that, Oliver? 
uh, we'd get more supplies. Um, we'd see what schools would need the most technology, and you know how we could teach the fast taking program for more than just one school and help more kids. Great stuff, great stuff. Julie, you have any questions? Sure, congratulations. This is wonderful. I assume you all went through a design thinking process and that's how you got so turned on. Is that right? Yeah, yeah it's an elective our teacher started this this year and we, we really liked it and that's how it's kind of started. So do you that you have a starting at a very young age in kindergarten, I believe. Do you think that's too young? Well, we think it's good to help the children like learn to learn how to solve a problem correctly, because if they learn that when they're at a young age, they'll be doing that throughout the whole whole entire process of their life. And they'll be learning how to fully answer a question with a good answer. Well, awesome. thank you so much. Wonderful job. I've had so much help over the years through this organization. It has really brought me so far. So I'm excited to see how everybody else, you know, in the coming years is going to be doing. It's really exciting. The next step for Horses That Help is I'm starting to back off as much as I don't want to. I need to focus on school and work. My little sister, Hannah, is going to be taking over. She's really excited. And I chose the right person, even though she's been in front of me my entire life. Hi, my name is Holly Mertz, and I'm the founder of Horses That Help. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you today, Buddy Buddies. Hi there, my name is Gabriel Sun. I'm 16 years old and I'm currently a junior at American Heritage School of Boca del Rey. Hi, I'm Brendan Dedimore. I'm currently a junior and 17 years old and I'm a student at American Heritage of Boca del Rey. In the modern day, America has a literacy rate of 99%. This means nearly all Americans have the essential skills necessary to communicate and survive. However, the situation is much different for another kind of literacy financial literacy. According to Bank of America, only 16% of Americans aged between 18 and 26 years old feel optimistic about their financial future. Many Americans struggle with making sound financial decisions because of a lack of basic money sense. And as a result, they often end up living paycheck to paycheck, not putting enough into their savings accounts, or worse, living with great amounts of debt. My name is Gabriel Sun, and along with my partner, Brendan Dedimore, we created Money Buddies to tackle this issue. After taking a basic course in business and finance last year, I realized how truly underprepared I was for all the financial responsibilities of adult life. We want to address this lack of basic money sense at its root by teaching kids from a young age. And as officers of the Future Business Leaders of America Club at our school, we recognized a perfect opportunity to make good use of our members' experience. Money Buddy is about skilled individuals from our business club teaching third through eighth graders in Palm Beach County. We intend to reach kids from all types of, types of backgrounds, ranging from the underprivileged community to those who are more financially secure. We plan to achieve this by teaching at a variety of locations, ranging from after-school programs to local community centers. Currently, Money Buddies is teaching at the Florence Fuller Center on a monthly basis, but we plan to increase the number of locations and the frequency of said lessons in the future. To ensure the quality of Money Buddies, we have partnered with Bank of America and are using their Better Money Habits program. Money Buddies is unique and effective because of the fact that high schoolers are presenting the information, which makes the experience more relatable, more relatable for the kids involved. At our current lessons, kids have been super engaged asking for more lessons on things like taxes, bills, and even stocks. Money Buddies is sustainable because the members of our business club wish to continue the program on in the future. Currently, we're asking for the full $15,000 in order to fund our major expenses of a class set of Chromebooks with protective cases and plans, classroom materials, which include print materials and art supplies, organization set of costs, and investments for promotion and growth. Investors, with your generous support, we will empower a whole new generation of young Americans to be ready for their financial futures. So please invest in Money Buddies, Money Sense Made Fun. Thank you. Now may we answer any questions you have? Gabriel, Brendan, that was an awesome presentation. Congratulations. You guys were well-organized, thoughtful, and I can see why you deal with money, because you're going to deal with a lot of it in your lifetimes. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So what's success for you guys in this project? What, what, what would determine, what would you 
think has to happen over your year of doing this, your first year of doing this, for you to feel like it's been very successful? For us, success is really teaching the kids the importance of financial literacy and then in this to show them how important it is, even from a young age, that it's something that you just can't slack on, you know? Would you like to add anything, Gabriel? Yeah, I think financial literacy is such an important tool for society because it helps all of us achieve not only economic satisfaction, but also personal satisfaction. And I think really what we want to achieve within not only just one year, but in the long term is giving people the ability to live the lives that they want to. And with a good knowledge of financial literacy, we think that our students will be able to live the lives that they want to. How many students do you think we can impact this first year? And then how many over maybe a five-year period? Um, currently, we have taught at our own lower school and at the Florence Fuller Center. I would say in total, we have impacted around 50 students already. Um, with the current situation of COVID-19, that will definitely impact our ability to have physical workshops, but we are working on efforts to go virtual with platforms such as Zoom. And we feel confident that we can reach out to, at least for this, for this year, well over um, 100 students. And as for the future, we have not exactly planned that out but we hope that we can reach as many students as possible. What metrics are you guys going to use to measure your success? So a few systems of measurement for our success would be to see how many students we're teaching, number of workshops that we've delivered, and the results on our teachings of financial literacy. So we plan on giving like quizzes to our students like after we give a lesson to make sure that they really absorb the information and if they do well on those, I believe that would be the most successful for us. Congratulations. I'd like to take your course. <laughs> I could definitely <laughs> use it. The other three men have a lot of financial literacy. <laughs> um, I just think it's outstanding. I don't have any questions. I think you were very thorough in your presentation. So I'm going to pass it along. Really nice presentation. And uh, congratulations. We'll see how it goes. Thank, Thank you so you. much. We really appreciate it. I started CanCode as a way to spread my passion for computer programming. Myself and other teenagers that I've trained, we teach the elementary schoolers computer programming concepts while they're making a video game. Sometimes they don't even realize what kind of concepts that we're actually teaching them. It's really so heartwarming and exciting when they come to you with more questions and they're getting excited about it and they want to add more things to their games. The way that we do that is through teaching computer programming workshops for free to underprivileged kids. I won $15,000 from Philanthropy Tank to really expand CanCode, and I also got a mentor in Mr. John Scarpa. You have all of these great resources where you can make a bigger difference. I'm year three finalist Noah Rubin, the founder of CanCode, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you our next presenter, Hello Hygienics. Hello and good afternoon. My name is Nisha John. And my name is Jonathan Barris. We are currently 11th graders at Spanish River High School, and we are the founders of Hello Hygienics. In Palm Beach County, the issue of homelessness is marked by limited access to basic needs such as dental care, skin care, feminine care, and more. Indeed, our county is threatened by a barrier to sanitation perpetuated by a cruel cycle of poverty. In the face of this issue, we have decided to act. Now, with over 189,000 Palm Beach County residents living under the poverty line, we find that many of these individuals fail to obtain proper access to hygiene resources. For the homeless of Palm Beach County, this barrier to proper san sanitation is exacerbated by harsh living conditions. Due to poor hygiene, it was found that nearly 22% of the homeless have been turned away from shelters, and 21% have been denied access to food and other services. Hello Hygienic strives to aid these underserved communities with a simple solution. My partner and I will distribute Hello Hygienic's care kits equipped with hygiene essentials such as toothbrush, toothpaste, sunscreen, and more. To create solutions for our community, various products in our care kits are made from recycled and eco-friendly materials. These very products are essential to reducing the risk of infectious disease, decreasing unemployment, and promoting a heightened sense of mental well-being. Ultimately, Hello Hygienics' mission is to raise awareness of this issue and enable teens in Palm Beach County to contribute to the welfare of their communities. 
With your help, we could make our mission a reality and serve low-income families throughout Palm Beach County. In our budget, we've calculated that each Hello Hygienics care kit would be $4.68 per kit, including all of the eight essential hygiene products. We've made arrangements with wholesalers of each of the products to be included in the kits, dropping unit prices to as low as 11 cents. By joining our cause, we could fund over 2,900 kits to be distributed to families in need. To maximize our impact on the community, we have included in-kind services such as packaging, transportation, and distribution to be done in conjunction with our partner, Boca Helping Hands. To sustain our project, we have recruited team volunteers to further the cause and have established a Hello Hygienics chapter at our school. In this way, we can build a network of support to raise awareness and promote active involvement in the community. And so investors, we are asking for the full $15,000 to execute this project. With your help and mentorship, we believe we can change the lives of thousands in our community. After all, the right to sanitation should not be dismissed for the sake of survival. With the help of a toothbrush, a sunscreen, a bottle of shampoo, we can pave a healthier future for Palm Beach County together. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, Nisha and John, thank you so much for your compassionate project you put together, especially for those who often don't have a voice. How do you have long range sustainability? How do you see that happening? Well, that's a great question. Um, so Johnny and I plan to establish a chapter at our school um, where we will be able to involve more teens in this effort and hopefully sustain this project way after um, we graduate. In the present circumstances we're at, I mean, have you guys thought about the different hygiene now that we're dealing with COVID-19? And in addition to Boca Helping Hands, do you have any other distribution that works? Yeah, we've reached out to Boca Helping Hands as well as the League of Palm Beach and a few other organizations, and we have been in contact with them, but Boca Helping Hands was the main one that we were planning on distributing all of our kits to. So tell me, how are you going to identify uh, those uh, to whom you want to distribute your kits? The homeless and the low income of Palm Beach County, um, which are definitely, um, we, are, we would be able to reach those um, populations at Book Helping Hands. <laughs> with the present situation with COVID, have you thought about putting masks in these kits? That's definitely something we are considering. Um, the you know the what's difficult with our um with our plan is that um what the products that we are ordering ordering are subject to um increased demand um so that's definitely something that we will be looking into in order to um combat this pandemic because um that is definitely one of the greatest priorities um, right now in our community great right. job thank you great job nice job you two it's always felt amazing since the beginning, even when Dan was running it. We've known that we're going to go down the line as far as we can. Well, when I took it over, my mom and I had the ideas of the Lego parties. We make it more of an event. I just was so happy with the opportunity to really make these kids stays and really just make them happy, even if it's just for a day or for an hour when they're hanging out with us and building Legos, <laughs> letting their mind wander. It's just amazing to be able to be there when this is happening. We are Daniel and Sarah Klein from Year One's Bricks Boston. In sophomore tech for seniors is up next. Hi, my name is Sam Freeman. I'm a sophomore at Suncoast High School where I major in computer science. I'm the founder and president of South Florida Tech for Seniors, or SFTFS for short. SFTFS is a 501c3 nonprofit organization with a simple purpose to help senior citizens in South Florida with any and all of their technological needs. Through SFTFS, volunteers like myself travel directly to places where elderly people live or commonly visit, like assisted living homes and religious institutions. There, we offer completely free one-on-one -on -one support for each person to help with whatever it is they need. There are 431,767 wow. seniors living in Palm Beach County alone. 91% of seniors in the U.S. own a cell phone and three quarters of them report needing help setting up new electronic devices. That means that there's a huge market of people in our area who need help with tech, and we wanna help as many of them as possible. Since July, we've worked with hundreds of seniors at multiple locations throughout the county, but the most successful place we've worked with so far is Morris Life, an assisted and independent living home in West Palm Beach. We have a session there each week, which around a dozen people attend for one-on-one -on -one support, and the people there love us. Here are just a few of their happy faces. 
In some cases, we even travel directly to residents' apartments to help with devices like desktop computers and printers. That means that the residents, many of whom have limited mobility and access to transportation, don't have to leave the comfort of their home to get the help they need. By facilitating online communication from grandparent to grandchild and enabling access to online news and information, we are bettering the quality of life for seniors. Our biggest goal is to expand to help as many seniors as possible. That's why we're asking for $15,000. Your generous support would allow us to offer more events at more places, like libraries, community centers, and other assisted living facilities. It would allow us to pay for advertising to get more teens involved and more seniors interested. Finally, it could cover volunteers' costs to make volunteering as frictionless as possible. Technology is expensive, and your support would allow us to purchase equipment like laptops for our volunteers and projectors, microphones, and speakers to make group presentations possible and ensure everyone is able to see and hear what we are presenting. We need software to make stuff like Microsoft Office and Adobe Creative Cloud. And we also need software to help the seniors directly. For example, we hope to provide virus protection software for free when necessary and remote management software that would allow us to tap into seniors' devices for a quick fix without even having to be there. So that is South Florida Tech for Seniors. Thank you. My answer, any questions you may have. Sure, well, congratulations, Sam. It's uh, pretty impressive. I just wanna ask first, what got you involved in this? Obviously, you're already up and running. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I've kind of been the technology person in my family, and I've always helped out my own aunts and uncles, and especially my grandparents with their devices, like their laptops, their phones, their TVs. And it, it kind of occurred to me that there are a lot of people who don't have somebody like me who can help out. And that's the main goal of this organization is to provide people like me to those senior citizens to, to help them out. Yeah, pretty, pretty impressive. And the last thing I just asked would be how when you talk about expanding, how many volunteers do you have working with you? How many SAMs are there and how do you recruit more? <laughs> so right now we have about half a dozen people and uh, I recruit more through some various methods. Some of them are just friends that I've talked to directly. But we also communicate with schools. And like I mentioned, we hope to do advertising and kind of branch out. Hopefully we can get some connections with other schools and places like that. But the main goal is to get basically high school age teenagers. And uh, so through word of mouth, through advertising and through teachers and people like that at schools. Great skill set. Uh, <laughs> love it. And believe me, I, I, I understand the frustration of the senior that needs the help with technology. <laughs> so... We've got this crazy world right now, and and and, and being face to face with people obviously is very very difficult. Right. What percentage of what you're doing is teaching one to many, where you might be able to use some digital solutions, and if not that, how might you even on the one to one be able to use some digital solutions? Right. So I mean, we are fully committed to obviously alternative solutions of teaching seniors. I mean, some of the things we've been working on now. One of our, our big projects now is producing videos. So I've actually already produced one line of videos on a YouTube channel that's free and accessible for everyone, but it's particularly aimed towards seniors. So something like that is very scalable because that can be produced one time and then be sent out to seniors all over around the county, the state, even the country and the world. Um, another thing that we're doing is we're, hopefully if we're able to receive funding to do so, we want to work with Morse Life to provide them with iPads that will be set up by South Florida Tech for Seniors with uh, video chatting software. So for example, something like FaceTime, that would then be set up and given to them. So for the seniors who don't have access to those devices, they could borrow those devices and use them to talk to their family while they're isolated in quarantine. So unfortunately, we won't be able to work one-on-one. -on -one. Sorry, the, the one other thing too is that uh, remote access software that I talked about, yeah. that would allow us to basically tap into their computers to provide the same level of support we normally would and do it remotely. I just want to say thank you because as you age, people get increasingly disconnected from their loved ones. And this is such a wonderful way to do this. And I just think it's remarkable. Um, I just wonder if they don't have the ability to um, use these devices and you're using virtual workshops, how's that gonna work? Because right. I how do they even know what to do? Right. I mean, I have been answering, I don't even know how many personal phone calls. And that's a big thing that I forgot to mention is just personal phone calls, you know, calling these people up on the phone and literally walking uh -huh. step by step through them, you know, just like I would one on one. And, uh, you know, so if, if they don't even have access to YouTube, which I know some of them don't, 
that's something that we've been doing is literally just calling them and talking to them, walking it through with them step by step. Yeah. How many of them want to adopt you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Great Thank job, you. Sam. Thank Great you. job, Sam. Thank you. Hi, I'm Andrea. Hi, I'm Harry. And, and we're, we're STEM Lab. Lab. Last year, our budget was fully funded to help provide disadvantaged kids with a rich STEM education. We also provide the resources necessary to help every child succeed academically. We have impacted 95 students and currently have two location sites. We also want to continue to impact kids across Palm Beach County. We, we want to welcome, welcome the next group, venture. venture. Hi, my name is Ben Gao. I'm a junior at Dreyfus School of the Arts, and today I am pitching Venture. A couple weeks ago, on my way to one of these rehearsals, I had a big problem. When I went to go pay the small fee for the parking meter downstairs, I had realized that I'd spent the last of my spare change at Dunkin' Donuts the day before. <laughs> Financial crisis for me. Fortunately, it wasn't serious. But in the end, it is a microcosm that represents the financial ineptitude in the status quo today. Currently, the state of Florida requires every student to take an economic course to graduate. Our lawmakers rec recognize the value of an economic education, but have failed to implement the adequate programs to bring their views to life. Mr. Nestor Valiente, an economics teacher at Summer Ridge High School, explains how the biggest fear of his students is how a lack of proper education may cause financial instability in their futures. This is where Venture has come from. Venture is an organization that is focused on spreading financial literacy and entrepreneurship skills to the youth in Palm Beach County. Through our partnership with Junior Achievement, we've acquired a curriculum and network with elementary, middle, and high schools throughout the county. Our interactive sessions teach students a wide variety of topics, from savings accounts and entrepreneurship for younger students to college finances for high school students. Through these educational sessions, we hope to expose students to the wealth of available knowledge, inspire students to pursue further opportunities, and encourage students to apply their knowledge in the real world. Yes, Venture is the brainchild of students, but our organization will thrive under the guidance provided by Philanthropy Tank, the infrastructure from junior achievement, the willingness of our high school volunteers, and hopefully the experience of you. With the generous support provided through philanthropist investors, we are asking for $10,000 to purchase technology such as Chromebooks, instructional materials such as notebooks, and subscriptions to online platforms such as stock market simulators. Currently, we are facing a crisis that has brought most parts of our world to a screeching halt. Students are out of school indefinitely, organizations and clubs are closed, and I haven't left my house for weeks. Our world may be on pause, but it is still very much alive on the internet. Venture was originally intended to teach online set or live sessions to students in person, but we have already managed to shift our operations online. We are currently working with Junior Achievement to record lectures for hundreds of students across the country, and we plan to continue doing so. Our organization is flexible and able to pivot to accommodate many different setbacks and obstacles. On the other hand, the relationships we cultivate with the brilliant PIs will provide us with crucial guidance to help refine the organization to innovate and expand. Every single one of you all sitting on my screen in front of me have become very successful people, business people, and leaders in our communities, and I challenge you to venture far with me in this opportunity. Thank you. Benjamin, that was awesome. You can Thank obviously you. see the blend of your uh, financial skills and your tech, tech skills and your artistic skills, because that was a beautiful presentation. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested to hear how you've already started to pivot to being able to do things online. And what's your plan for how you might continue to do that and make it interactive? Right. So in the past, we had many opportunities lined up to teach in live sessions with elementary schools. And obviously, given the cur current circumstances, Junior Achievement has helped set up multiple different Google Classrooms for different areas across the county. And using the, um, the materials that they provided us, I'm starting to record live lectures and sessions to post for these students. It's the same thing that we would teach in the classroom, but just virtual. Okay. And what success for you, Ben? What, what are we looking at a year from now and five years from now? Success, first off, is for me to be able to set a goal and accomplish this. And in the future, I hope to expand through various elementary, middle, and high schools throughout the county, and even hopefully establish little satellite groups to be able to work with me from different school high schools across the county. So, Ben, um, you know, a great presentation. I mean, do you have set curriculums 
And is it a different curriculum for middle school versus high school? Yes, we have for different, actually, uh, grade levels. Junior Achievement has helped provide us with their curriculum that is different uh, complexity and different topics for all different ages. Just tell us a little bit about your team and how you recruit more volunteers. So, I go to an art school, Dreyfus, which is an incredible opportunity, but I realized a little bit early on that I did not see myself as a professional musician and that I was really interested in career in business and finance. And at my school, there was a good, big community of students who also had that same mindset. And there were a lack of opportunities because we're in art school. So we came together and decided to create our own uh, organization to be able to like uh, work towards our goal. Ben, oh, that was just amazing. Uh, you're, you blend both sides of the brain, the creative and the yeah. analytical, which is really, you're going to go far. What kind of incentives do you find you're going to need to use? Because at, because of COVID, you're going to have to do a lot of this online. What's going to make, I know with my grandkids, they're having a hard time even wanting to sign on to their classes. So have you thought about how you're going to incentivize them? Um, yes, actually, there's two different ways. Um, we've worked with different schools where their class is part of their curriculum and what they learn is this. So Regardless if they don't want to, they're often they, they don't have a and so they're gonna learn a and two it's a good topics, incentive. <laughs> the topics that we provide for high school students we've seen are very popular, such as college finances. Coming up, it's a really booming topic that is often overlooked and many students find as a very important to learn themselves. Great okay. job, Ben. Ben, that was terrific. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Oh, thank you guys so much. <laughs> thank you. I'm Tyler Rumrell of Hydroponic Harvest. Our organization was funded in the second year of Philanthropy Tank. We have created farms within Spanish River High School that grow produce. Since being funded, thousands of green peppers have been donated to the Palm Beach County Food Bank. Up next, I am pleased to introduce Stand Up, Be Counted. Hi, I'm Anijah Graham. And I am Ayani Phillips. And we're pitching and Stand, we're up, Be Stand Up, Be Counted. Growing up as a child, I love to explore my hometown. Uh, though at my age, I saw no problem with the damaged parks or buildings that lack code enforcement. Those were the best memories. And now being 17 years of age, I see the need for change. When I was younger, I knew nothing about the importance of completing the census, voting, or the impact on, on our government, our community had. Now I know. Good evening. My name is Anijah Graham, and this is my partner, Ayani Phillips. We're both juniors at Glacier Community High School in Belle Glade, Florida, and we are Stand Up, Be Counted, building a better glades for a better tomorrow. Today's presentation goes as follows. The purpose of Stand Up, Be Counted, Stand Up, Be Counted's impact on the communities, our plan for Stand Up, Be Counted, and Stand Up, Be Counted's call to action. Our purpose. Our purpose is to better our communities which is Bell Glade, South Bay, and Pahokee, also known as the Tri-City Areas. Change the mindset of our people. They have a voice. Eliminate the, the perception that we are a do-nothing community. Increase the voter and census population intake. Also, we want to increase the opportunities that are given to the Tri-City residents. I will now discuss our impact. Stand Up Be Counted will impact over 31,000 residents. We will impact the un undocumented immigrants, all minorities, and all other races. We will also enlighten those who do not have knowledge on their government and the resources that they can receive, as well as bring more opportunities to our community. How we will do this, you may ask. Well, with our plan. We will first begin with doing our research, which includes researching topics and ideas to present to the Tri-City citizens. Then follows our recruitment. We will recruit 10 agents of change, and they will help us execute our plan, which includes having collaborative workshops, social and learning events, small meetups, and even outreach. And with the responses from our representatives, citizens, and mayors, we will be able to create a better glade which involves getting more citizens counted, more citizens voting, and an increase in our resources. This is why we are asking you for the full 15,000, 4,000 for technology, 3,000 for events, 3,000 for materials, 3,000 for branding, as well as 2,000 for giveaways. 
We are asking you to invest in us so that we may invest in our communities and generations to come, touching many hearts and manifesting transformation. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Ladies, the presentation's very organized, very well put together. You guys did a really amazing job. Um, yeah, I know one of the main focuses that you guys have is on the census, but to sustain this beyond the census, what else activities are you going to do to keep this program going? Stand Up Be County, it doesn't just include the census. It includes voting in any matter that has our citizen voicing their opinion, getting out and changing our community, which can be building homes, coming up with team outreach programs. It's all, all included. I know you had some goals in, in why you want to do this. So goals for your community. So when you are successful here, what will that look like? Well, what will the goals be that you have met? Better housing for our citizens, um, more leaders, from our, from our team, they will know who they are as a person, a better community that communicate within, within the tri area, mayors will be able to contact mayors, we'll be able to have, you know, the tri city events where there's no violence, uh, better, better schooling for our, um, our, our teens, as well as, after school programs for them. We don't have a lot of those. So with the resources that we will look into to give to our citizens and our mayors and representatives, they'll be able to take that to just increase our, you know, tri-city area and to put our name on the map. You're certainly empowered young women, and I can tell that you're going to be able to empower your community. Some of the questions I have, though, is during this difficult time where you really can't go door to door, how do you hope to accomplish and have in-person meetings? How do you hope to accomplish your goals? As it relates to in-person meetings, we have decided to do a social media push because ah. we don't know when, when we will be able to go back um, and knock on doors. Also, the census, it has extended its time for three months. So it's up until August. We pr we're probably will be out in August. So instead, we're just going to do a social media push, um, which which we can like take the information, post it, host live sessions, get questions from the community they might have. Um, and also when it comes to our giveaways, we're, we're trying to use the giveaways to uh, like to catch more of our audience because we know in order for us to get the response, we're going to have to give. It's not always going to be easy, but we're in for the challenge. Thank you. I'm sure you're going to accomplish it. Great Thank job. you. <laughs>
I was able to get four sunscreen dispensers up at UCF. I took it to college because I was accepted into the LEAD Scholars program. As part of the curriculum, you have to do a service learning project. Since this has already been started down here, I thought it was a good thing to just bring it up there. Bricks Blessing Boredom began after our family realized how little so many children in children's hospitals had ways to express their creativity. We found what a good resource Legos were. While they're so expensive, parents will buy them for their kids, and then they won't want to get rid of them so let's sit in a garage or an attic and we thought this is a really good untapped resource we want to try our best to put those legos to good use the biggest part that Palm Beach Philanthropy Tank gave to us was the great mentoring and also helping us become a nonprofit organization. Coming into it, I knew I was about a year and a half away from going to college. My sister and brother, who were both in high school and middle school at the time, would be perfect to take over the organization. We knew that it needed to continue and it was necessary for people to just feel the happiness that the Legos and the parties bring. We're gonna go down the line as far as we can. Our philanthropist investors are now deliberating over who's going to be awarded funding and mentoring. While you cheer on our eight groups of student finalists, don't forget to vote for the fan favorite on social media. Something else to consider while you take part in our fifth annual celebration, we're asking for your support to continue empowering young leaders like those you've seen in our program. Please text to the number on your screen. You will have the opportunity to make a donation and help support the Philanthropy Tank mission of empowering our next round of change makers. We thank you in advance for your participation. I think I'm getting the signal that the philanthropist investors are ready and have made their decisions. Will your favorite program be funded? Who will be the student's mentor? Let's find out. Rithika, I'm so honored to be your mentor. I'm really looking forward to working with you and I'm going to fund you for $13,000. And I'm gonna throw you in an additional $1,000. And I would also like to support you with $1,000. Oh, wow. So you're now funded at 15000 and I can't wait to get started working with you. I really appreciate it. I look forward to working with you guys. Pierce, Oliver, Angel, I just love what you guys are doing. I think you're going to make a big impact on these kids' lives. And I'm really proud to be a mentor and work through this with you over the next year. And uh, I'm going to fund you $12,000. I am very excited to also throw in $1,000. I'm also going to throw in 500 bucks top it off for you guys. It's a total of 13,500. Congratulations. Great job tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Gabriel and Brendan, terrific job. You guys are going to be terrific leaders. You're going to do a fantastic job teaching a very important topic and very important to me, financial literacy. I am honored and excited to be your mentor and to back you with $10,000. Gentlemen, very impressive. A great program you're putting together. I will add 4000 to that total. I'm going to throw in $500 to get you guys to your ask. I love your program. I love your partners. You guys are fully funded at 14.5. Congratulations and Thank great you. job. And we're Thank going to have so a lot much. of fun. And I look awesome. forward to working with you to make it great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sam, you are an impressive young man. What you've already accomplished. Congratulations. I'm excited to be working with you as your lead mentor, and I'm going to fund you $10,000. I'm going to throw in $2,500 as well. I'm also going to throw in $2,500. Sam, that's $15,000 fully funded. I, I am so honored, really. It's, it's such a big honor to, to receive this <laughs> you, from you guys. You did a great job, Sam. Ben, congratulations. You did a fantastic job. And I would like to lead the funding of you and, and be, frankly, your mentor to help you get this done. So I'm going to award you $7,500. And I'm going to throw in an additional $3,000. Ben, you are fully funded. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Nisha and Jonathan, I'm so honored to be working with you. You've really touched me with your compassion and your passion as well. And I'm going to fund you for $9,000 and I'll look forward to start mentoring you. Julie, I'd like to add $1,000 to your, to your so, contribution. So that's a total of $10,000 and we can't wait to get started. We appreciate it so much. We are excited. We appreciate you. You guys did an amazing job of putting your presentation together and convincing us how passionate you are. With that, I'm gonna fund $7,000. I just would love to join you for $2,000. And I'd also like to join for $1,000. I'm gonna add $500. Congratulations in total. 
you got funded 10,500. Best of luck and look forward to working with you both. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations, everybody. An amazing year five finals event, given the, uh, the virtual nature. Everyone handled it like a pro. So impressed how you were able to change and adapt to the current environment we're in with each of your projects from what you submitted back in October and November this past year. As you know, this is just the beginning. And we're all really, really excited to be working with you. What I love about Philanthropy Tank, you get the benefit of all the preparation and all the learning. And then the community gets the benefit of all of your efforts. You're going to help a lot of communities that are being uh, really disadvantaged in these times. Great group of young people and you did a wonderful job. And I'm just, just proud to be part of it. You are busy, busy people and yet you spend your time helping others. It's the very best of the generations to come and I'm really privileged to be working with you. Thank you so much. It's been an amazing year five. I want to thank my fellow philanthropist investors for getting involved. The Philanthropy Tank staff, it's all about you guys, our future change makers. So let's all make it happen. We're now at the end of our program, but these change makers work to better the community is just beginning. Thank you all for watching and supporting Philanthropy Tank, especially all of our sponsors who've been featured during the show. If you are or know of a future changemaker interested in pitching us your community impact idea, please visit our website. Applications are now open. To volunteer or get involved with our student programs, please follow us on social media. Thank you all for watching. The Philanthropy Tank Live Finals Event, a Brand Story Communications production.